It's now about a quarter after six, and time now for What's Trending. Russia's B-girl Castet and B-boy Shig Kicks of Japan were crowned the Red Bull BC1 champions at the World Finals in Austria on Saturday. In this year's special competition, eight female and eight male breakdancers from various countries showcased their skills to become world champ. The competition has been organized with the participation of thousands of dancers in more than 30 different countries since 2004. Castet won the breakdancing title for the second year in a row, and Shig Kicks became the youngest ever competitor to win the title at the age of 18. The 17th edition of the Red Bull BC1 invited 16 of the world's best breakdancers from 11 countries this year to take part in the competition. And breakdancing has also been added to the 2024 Paris Olympic Games. So, you guys, that's the thing that I was most interested in. I forgot about that, that uh, it's going to be an Olympic event. So, for these people, um, I'd say they have obviously a really good shot of making it to the Paris Olympics. And it's so fun, too, just to see all the different moves. Really, um, you know, makes me think of, of the 80s and all the breakdancing <laughs> that happened back then. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Look at those moves. It's so impressive and uh, really cool to see that break. There's still a really uh, big breakdancing scene out there. Um, you know, it's, it'll be very interesting to see that element added to the Olympics. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people tuning in uh, specifically just to, to check that new event out and watch that. Andy, will you be watching? Oh my gosh, yeah. I'm really curious about that too, seeing how that'll play out in the Olympics. It seems like this, the generations now are really more into dancing, breakdancing, as, um, you know, from what I'm observing, seeing some friends that like to take to TikTok to learn new dance moves. I may have to refer them now to <laughs> sure. watching the games. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, what a cool story there. Well, on to this next story, this young hunter might be dancing after his trophy deer. The period for hunting deer with guns came to a close here in Wisconsin yesterday, of course, but one seven-year-old boy had a trophy buck that could keep him smiling until next season. Jericho Mansk shot a 21-pointer. His dad, Eric, says for him to be able to shoot an animal that size, it was just amazing. It happened on an Oconto County deer ranch. Jericho started practicing at a very young age. Eric says he had him shooting a BB gun at a target when he was probably just about one year old. He shot a spike when he was five in Michigan and a six pointer last year at six years old. Now at seven years old, a 21 pointer. How about that? And Jericho says he got set up and pulled the trigger. And he was shooting from 50 yards away. It ran about 30 yards and dropped. The 21 pointer is now at a local, local taxidermist waiting for a chest mount and the prize of a lifetime at just seven years old. How about that? I know that so many hunters go out every year um, and like they said, the prize of a lifetime, they never, you know, some, some never get an opportunity to even see a deer that size. So how cool of him to be able to do that. I'm sure his dad is super proud. Exactly. And I was also just taken by the fact that he's been training him or kind of grooming him to be a hunter since he was one. Mm -hmm. So he's had a lot of practice. And I also read uh, that his dad does stand behind him when he is shooting to um, help with the kickback. So he has his dad there as a little bit of support, which is good. That's great. But um, wow, just what an amazing thing for that family. And I'm glad that they're going to have it mounted so that they'll have it forever. It's really impressive young talent watching that, just such a young age. Really also his dad being the teacher too. I don't know who's more impressive, either the teacher or uh, the shooter there. So really just great talent all around at yeah. such a young age. Uh, switching gears a little bit here, uh, my story to share today is uh, going to be about uh, wildlife crossing highways. So what do you do when there's a problem on a highway with, uh, well, with uh, wildlife? So build them their own bridge, of course. After hmm. years of vehicle accidents involving animals, the Utah Department of Transportation decided to build the local four-legged residents their own commuter bridge over I-80, allowing them to cross safely. The Utah Division of Wildlife Resources thought it would take years for the animals to start using it, but were pleasantly surprised recently when the furry travelers took to it in just the second year. A wildlife uh, migration coordinator says it's the time of year when animals move from their high elevation summer ranges down to the winter ranges in the foothills. They've seen moose, deer, cougars, bobcats, coyotes, Coyotes, bears, and porcupines use the bridge. So, uh, yeah, definitely making travel easier for our furry friends out in the west.